I know some of you weren't, so we're, we may cover a little bit of the same things, but you know, one thing we didn't get to talk to yeah. you about, what we talked about when you started collecting in the hobby. Yes. But we did talk about little baby John and his first exposure to arcade games. Tell me a little bit about, like, growing up. I mean, obviously this yeah. had to connect with you as an adult, but there had to be a seed when you were a kid. Well, yeah, I mean, I grew up in the 80s, so I was an 80s kid, riding my bicycle to 7-Eleven, you know, that's where I played a lot of games, at 7-Eleven. And I played, I remember playing Dragon's Lair there, and Donkey Kong Jr., and then my parents were big campers. And I know I've told this before, but my parents were big campers, and so we went camping like every weekend. And in the 80s, every campground had like arcades. And so there's one campground we used to go to, had like an outbuilding, and they had asteroids in there, and I remember playing like Evil Knievel Pinball, and, and so, we go camping. My parents would be at, at the, you know, at the, at the site, you know. And I would just leave, just go to the arcade, <laughs> like the whole day. Do you remember the, the first quarter you put in, where what game it was? I don't know. My earliest arcade memories, I think, are Asteroids. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I have an earlier one though, because I, I, I grew up in Chicago, and I remember a friend of mine. I know I've told this story before, but a friend of mine, Chris O'Malley, he, he described this thing to me that was at a bar. It was, it was a place called the Snuggery, I think, in Edison Park, Illinois. And he described this thing where you get inside of a room and you have to escape like from jail by breaking bricks. And it was so abstract, I didn't know what he was talking about. And, and so he said, yeah, it's at this place. And so we rode our bikes there and we snuck in. We're like six or seven or something, going into a bar. And, and he showed me it and it was Breakout. And that was the first game I ever saw. And, uh, and it just, what he was describing, I couldn't comprehend, you know? And then we get there, and it's a video game. And that was the first one, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you were lucky to be able to have such an early exposure to the arcades as a kid. I was a little bit later, so my yeah. was like Street Fighter 2 and that kind of stuff. And that was your first? No, 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 no. That, was like, that was my golden age, though. It was. Yeah. yeah. That was where you, what you played in the arcade. Right, right. My first was actually Galaga. It was. Yeah, I was like two years old. My mom had me go to two. school playing Galaga. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. Yeah. So that was actually one of my girls getting into this stuff, but who cares about me? Um, what was your uh, first console? You you know you're huge with the Xbox community, yeah. but were were you early adopter of Atari or, or what? Yeah, Pong. Pong was my first console. My dad wanted a garage sale. I remember he brought it home. I feel like I told us. My dad brought the console home from a garage sale. It was, it was like some Sears Pong set or something generic like that. And he's like, you can have this after you mowed the lawn. And it was the fastest I ever mowed my lawn ever. And so I had that in my bedroom. And I don't know what year that was, probably 80 or so, something like that. You know, so I had Pong in my bedroom. And then and then we got the 2600. Uh, and my dad bought that like used from a newspaper ad. I remember going to people's house to get it. And uh, that was great. I mean, 2600 just changed my life. <laughs> I mean, it's funny, like now, like, because I, I was having this out with the 2600, and so I went and picked one up off of eBay, and I bought the Harmony cart, you know, you put the SD card in there, and I had all the 2600 games, and I'm like, these are horrible, how did I play this? <laughs> they did not hold up. Yeah, I had the, I, I picked up the Jack's Joystick one, Yeah. and the only one that was kind of on the level was Circus, with the, with the Oh, yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah, with the paddles. Yeah, you guys remember that one? That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Did you just graduate? Uh, with every I, system, did you then you were the NES when you picked it no, up? No, I went from the tw uh, 2600 to, I, I never had ColecoVision, I never had Intellivision, my friends all did, and I was always, we couldn't afford it, I was jealous of them. So I, I, I played plenty of ColecoVision and Intellivision at friends' houses, but I didn't, my next step after the 2600 was an 800 XL computer, and that dominated my life for, I don't know, five, six years or something like that, and then I got the NES, and then, and then I followed all the Nintendo consoles until the first Xbox. Yeah. So we have a retro console room out there. Yeah, so did you check it out? I did. Did you, see, did you pay attention to any of the games that were on there? Um, so like we got River Raid in the, oh, yeah. uh, the Atari. And so what we have to do is because we don't have people in there to be able to change the cartridges and stuff, we have to lock them down. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. So if you were to pick one game, Pitfall. Pitfall is your go-to <laughs> game that you locked in there. Pitfall was the best 2600 game hands down. Yeah. Don't you guys agree? Yeah. No? <laughs> River Raid was good too. The Activision stuff was so weak. Yeah. Yeah, it's killing it. yeah. uh, we're going to have some questions in a little bit, so be thinking about uh, what you'd like to ask John, and I'll walk around in a minute and get you guys to ask some questions. I know you have a few. You've mentioned, you know, your friends, I mean, all the stuff. Yeah. Do you think uh, jealousy as a kid 
really contributed to your desire as an adult to have the basement that you do? Um, I think that as a kid, I fantasized like you know watching Silver Spoons and all that. Yeah. Like having arcade games because like Silver Spoons, you know, we had all the arcade games in the background, and that was just like, you no, know, that's impossible, right? And so I think I, I did fantasize about it. I think we all go through this phase, we get older, and then we start collecting like G.I. Joe's and stuff. We didn't get that stuff when we were a kid. Like, oh, I have a Millennium Falcon when I'm 40, you know? <laughs> I finally got it. <laughs> Life goals. So there's a little bit of that. <laughs> okay, so for those who weren't here yesterday, may not be familiar with you, uh, give them a rundown of your basement that's now famous on John's Arcade YouTube channel. Um, how many games? What are some of your What are some of your your favorite pieces? My favorite. Well, I have, I have 35 games in the basement. I have two on my first floor in my house, um, and then I have like five in the garage, and then one at a friend's house. But uh, my favorite games. I mean, Donkey Kong is my favorite game. I said that a million times. But as far as like the basement, like you know, like what are my like? I love Major Havoc. Like I just really like that game a lot. I mean, Journey was an absolute journey for me making that game, getting in the basement, so I'll always cherish that that cabinet. Um, Zookeeper, I just adore that game. Pole Position is, is I, I can't stop playing it. That's probably the game I play the most, Pole Position. Aren't you, uh, didn't you have a really good score? Aren't you kind of ranked on that? Or no? Yeah, I mean, on Arcade, I, mean, I think I'm in the top 20 or something. My buddy Matt McCarthy play all the time. He's better than me, though. He, he's he, His high score is like 65 something. I'm like 63, seven or something. And the world record's like 66. It's a tough game. Do you play a position? <laughs> no, it's too hard, man. Really? Yeah. It's, hard. it's so awesome because it ends. That's the best part of it. Yeah. It, you have to get your best score before, before it ends. You like Outward? Not as much. Yeah. It's okay. I stink at Outward. I, I cannot finish it. I don't know what my problem is. Are you good at it? No, man. I'm awful at all of these games. I just like to collect them and yeah. store them and you know, get to meet people. What game out. are you good at? Any game? In I'm pretty decent at Galaga. Yeah, like, you are? Yeah. What's your score? Oh, my God. 20. 20? Yeah. That's good. That's good. I mean, it's not great. You know, that's the best I can do. Yeah. But if you can play me with Chun Li, I'll kick your ass in Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my character. <laughs> so, uh, I got a little uh, question about the games in your basement. Okay. So, you have your favorites. Yeah. One of the problems I have with as a collector, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have it too. Is you know we all want to have the things that we want, and a lot of times they don't turn out to be the same games we remember or hold up. Um, but anyway, one of the things I love as a hobbyist is you know the basement's not that much fun without people in it. Yeah. And so most of your videos uh, are just you down in the basement. It's true. How often do you get people down there to do something social, or is it pretty solitary for you down there? Uh, well, I, I usually have parties twice a year, and uh, I have a summer party and a holiday party. I didn't have my summer party this year because I was, uh, where was it? I'm here. Actually, this is the weekend I always do it. <laughs> <laughs> I always do my summer party the, like the third weekend in June, which is like right now. <laughs> so, and everyone was asking me, are you, are you doing your summer party? I'm like, no, I'm going to Atlanta. <laughs> so well, I usually, yeah, I usually do a summer party right now, and I usually have about 100 people show up for that, and then I have a holiday party, that's a little lower key, usually 50, 60 people. And then, and then like, I'll, I'll have random game nights, you know, like I'll just invite people over, you know, like on a Wednesday or something. But yeah, I, I agree, I mean, it, it's fun having the people in the basement, because that's kind of why you're doing it, right? I mean, it is kind of lame just to be by yourself down there, right. you know? <laughs> so, um, I've gotten some games before that I really, really wanted, and then I'd have people over, Yeah. and you know, nobody played them. I know. So, <laughs> what are some games like that for you where maybe uh, you're really disappointed that either they don't draw the same kind of attraction right. to, to players, or like me, I've picked up some games that I really don't care that much about, but I know they'll be popular right. in, the game, in the game. Well, Gravatar is one of those. I had Gravatar, which I think is really cool, but it's so hard, no one can play that game. Yeah. I mean, unless you own it and can like sit down and play it for like a half hour at a time, you'll never get good at it. And so Gravatar was one of those games that just nobody played by me. Like, no one went near it, you know? I still have some games like that in the basement. But there are definitely games in the basement, though, that are there because we people. You know, like my dartboard, which I get a lot of flack about. Um, I mean, my, my wife and I used to play that dartboard when we were dating all the time, so that's why I wanted it. But anyway, that, that dartboard is taking up a precious slot for a video game. But when I have parties, it gets played nonstop by people who are non-gamers. You know, like the neighbors and stuff. You know, they're all just playing darts, you know? 
And then the mega touch is there for my wife, because she just plays it all the time. That's great. So, so I do try to find the balance of stuff I really want, and then stuff like my wife will play, and you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna walk around with some questions. Anybody have a question? Hey, yeah, John. What about your 720? Yes. Have you? Because you, you got it, and then you were saying, "Gosh, this is harder than I thought." It's way harder. Yeah. Is it? <coughs> you're still trying to. Play? I'm trying to. I have, honestly, I haven't had time to play it like I want to. But I'm telling you, that game is is the hardest game in the world. I don't know how. No, I mean, it, it's no. There's no question why it might not have succeeded because it's so hard. Right. And you have to pump like. Twenty dollars into it to get remotely good at it. That that was a really bad game design, I think. Because, it, it, but it's it's good in the home environment though, because it's like it's it's so deep, really, because it's so hard. Right. Yeah. Questions? All right. <clears throat> You've got some really nice restored games. You've got some down there that you you haven't restored. Is I know. That, does that bug you? <laughs> uh, because you no. Said <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's some games down there that, that I just put down there and didn't do anything. And that was probably earlier in my collecting career where my standards were a little different. Like, <coughs> like the Tron, I never touched. And if I got that Tron today, there's no way I would put it down there the way it is. But I've gotten used to it, and it doesn't bother me. And I have all the artwork, I just haven't put it on there. So, I mean, I don't really know how to answer that because there are definitely games down there that I have not restored. And I, I'm kind of okay with it, you know? Because um, I've been to some people's houses or bars, or, and everything's so like freakishly perfect that it doesn't feel like an arcade. Um, yeah. So I guess, I guess that's my lame excuse why I, I, I can just, oh yeah, that's why it's like that. <laughs> feels like an arcade, it's got battle scars, patina. <laughs> but as I start collecting more though, I'm starting to appreciate some of the patina and stuff, you know? Like there was this young guy I was talking to uh, yesterday, he was asking me what he thought the value of that Pac-Man cabaret was, and he was like 15 years old. And he wanted me to look at it with him and, and give him an idea of what a good price was. And the control panel, the, the game is beautiful for all original, but the control panel on the, the Pac-Man cabaret, it's, it's metal that has, um, it has, you know, like a, a CPU on the top and then it's exposed metal on the bed and it was worn there, you know, like handwear. And, it, but it looked 100% original and he's like, oh, this is a real bummer. I'm like, don't, don't touch that. That looks, that looks fine. You know, there's, I think we should leave some of these games alone. You know, it's like a 57 Chevy. You don't want to start putting fiberglass fenders on it and stuff, you know? So I know there are obviously a lot of collectors in here, but there are probably some new collectors. And so someone who's in here and hears you say, I've got 35 games, you know, that is a massive number. And whether or not they have a space, I'm sure finding those games may be a problem. Do you have uh, some tips you can give to people about how you acquire the games? Yeah. I get this question like constantly. <clears throat> and it, like, I do viewer mail on YouTube videos. It's probably the most common email I get is like, how do you find these games? Because I think it is really intimidating initially when you get into the hobby because you don't know anybody. You don't know what anything's worth. You don't know what's good. You don't know what's bad. You see a game on Craigslist, it says, it says Burger Time, and you don't actually realize that it's in a Time Pilot cabinet, you know, and the guy wants $1,200 for it, and like I'll have people sending me links saying, you know, is this a good deal for this Burger Time? And then I'll click on the link, and it's clearly a Time Pilot cabinet, you know? And I'm like, no, that is not a good deal. So I think, I think you need to educate yourself. I think you need to, when you see things on Craigslist, you cannot accept it at face value. If the ad says Time Pilot, don't think it's just a time pilot. You know, research, Google what a time pilot cabinet looks like and make sure it is a time pilot because a lot of times it's not. It's a conversion and they want a lot of money for something that's not worth a lot of money. So, um, and then as far as like getting the games at a good deal, I mean, I think number one, I, I've said this a million times again, is if you have to meet people, you have to figure out who's who in your in your area because that's what I did. I mean, when I got in this hobby, I didn't know anybody and, and I now I know everybody in, in my area. And we all kind of help each other, you know, and, and you'll know that this guy's got this game and you'll just kind of put a bug in his ear. Hey, you know, when you go to sell that game, keep me in mind, you know, and then like a year later, you've got that game, you know. And so, so it's really important to meet people because that's how you don't overpay in this hobby. Um, if you just go on eBay, like, like my first game was Donkey Kong and I didn't know what I was doing. I went on eBay. I paid, I think, $1,000 shipped for that game, 1200 which was stupid at the time. I mean, that was just stupid money and I shouldn't have done it, but I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing, you know? 
And I was scared. I was scared to get something that was broken. And I, I was scared that I wasn't going to be able to fix it. And so I, I saw this eBay ad, and it was very comforting the way it was worded. And it's been refurbished, and we've gone through it. And I, I, I bought all of that, you know, and I paid the money. And, and it was a mistake, you know, because the guy was a clown that sold it to me. He didn't bolt the monitor down. He shipped it to my house. It was, it was destroyed. It was just an absolute train wreck. So just be careful with those kind of ads because it's, there's a lot of fluff in those ads that really there's not a lot of substance behind that. And they'll say things, you know, that are just silly, you know, like, you know, like replace the marquee starter, you know, like, like it's a bulb. The bulb point. in the monitor. What? The bulb in the monitor. Right, the bulb in the monitor has been replaced. We, we've oiled the hinges. We've, <laughs> we've done it. <laughs> you know, don't fall for that stuff. Um, but, and, and again, you know, as far as like Craigslist goes, the deals are there. You can find Craigslist deals, but you, ha it, it, you have to make it your job to find those deals. You can't just go on there once a week and search Arcade, you know? And if you go to John's Arcade, uh, my forum, we have a thread where I've kind of perfected the perfect Craigslist search term, I think, and uh, because people will list games all the time and they'll misspell things or they'll call it the wrong thing, or I've seen arcade games on Craigslist and the word arcade is nowhere in the listing. It'll just say like, uh, video game takes quarters, you know, like that. <laughs> and you'll never find that if you're searching for arcade games. You'll never find that listing. And I've gotten games like that where no one knew that listing was there because the guy just said, stand up arcade game takes quarters, you know, and then there's a picture of like this mint Galaga or whatever, you know, and it's $300, you know. So, so if you go on my site, I have a search term that, that kind of takes all that into uh, account, you know, like quarters and, and uh, vending or coin operated, like people will use that. And, and then like in Chrome, I have a, a, a plugin that pops up when something matches my search criteria, and that thing's running all day long. And like the Firefox I just picked up, I got that from that. And, and that Firefox was on Craigslist for like, it, it was actually on Craigslist for like about an hour, and I saw it. Like, I saw like a, the second was listed, and I was like thinking about it for an hour. I'm like, do I want to call this? Do I, want, do I really want to deal with this right now? But anyway, the point is that that pop-up notification thing finds a lot of stuff. And that way you don't have to be on Craigslist all the time. I used to have an app on my phone, but it's super annoying because it, it's like constantly popping up, you know? So. I know I've got some more questions, but uh, does anybody else have a question they'd like to ask John? Come on, ask right. questions. <laughs> What's your wife get? What did my wife get? What does yeah. that mean? For, for all, I mean, it's got to be a give and take, right? So if you're spending all this money on it, what does your wife she get? She had a collection of spoons. Uh, my wife uh, is awesome. I don't know what to say. <laughs> she gets mean. Uh, <laughs> no. So no, there's, I, there's, there's no like big thing that you do for her for appreciation or. Let's <laughs> play the big ones. I don't know what I answer this. No, that one I haven't been asked a hundred times. Uh, you know, my wife's awesome. I mean, we have you know our, our Saturday night movie nights and stuff, and we go out and, and, and you know we do a lot of family stuff. You know, we're we're big uh, family dinner people. Go out like every Friday for dinner, so we, we get some time together. <laughs> it's not all our cake games. So she doesn't like you don't get you know a new game and she gets you know. No, my wife's really not like that. You know, I take care of her. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you have a white whale game? A white whale game? Well, the dedicated Major Havoc for me is one of those games. I feel like I'm going to get one someday. I really want one, but the price is really stupid. But that would be a white whale game. I've actually managed to get a lot of the games I really wanted. Um, but I, I think dedicated Major Havoc is at the top of my list because I just think that cabinet is so elite looking. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, I would say Major Havoc for sure. Are you sure it was brown paint? What's that? Are you sure it was brown paint? <laughs> it was definitely brown paint. <laughs> Hi, I'm new to this whole scene. So I usually browse YouTube and stuff, and I see a lot of um, old stuff. I'm interested in the old stuff. But what got you interested in these cabinets, these arcade games? And is there a difference in quality between the consoles and the actual cabinets? The co you mean you mean playing like retro consoles or modern consoles versus the arcade? 
kind of both. Like, kind of both? Like the Ness versus a Galica captain kind of thing. Sure. Well, I think the gameplay in the arcade cabinets is, is just fundamental.